So this project in particular is called uh, The Blood of Heroes Never Dies. And uh, this is an installation of 5,171 poppies. There was an artist who got a group together and they made actually one poppy for every vet, um, soldier who died in England, from England in World War I. It was an enormous amount and they were installed at the Tower of London. And so those were up for the uh, 100 year celebration of World War I. We were inspired by that. We're making one poppy for each soldier who died in World War I from Texas. And so there were 5,171 soldiers and one nurse. And so we'll have one white poppy symbolizing that one nurse who died. So it's a big undertaking, but, um, but we're pretty excited about it. I'm working with Clive Siegel, who is our history faculty. And uh, so he and I decided we could do a Richland-sized version of that project. Uh, I usually, in my courses, had talked about uh, the remembrance part of World War I, uh, which revolved around not only making monuments and things like that, but, but curiously enough, using a flower, uh, and one specifically, which was the poppy. Poppies uh, were a different flower than most in that they grew in disturbed soil. And World War I disturbed a lot of soil. Uh, the battlefields were churned into virtual wastelands, yet in the middle of all of this, uh, the first thing up were these red poppies. And uh, they became the subject uh, of, a, uh, of a poem that was done by a Canadian doctor uh, uh, called In Flanders Field, which mentions the fact that the poppies actually grew uh, in, and also grew now in, on crosses, row on row, as the poem went. All of the poppies we're going to um, sell, and then those poppies that are sold will be, um, all the proceeds will go to a charity called Puppies Behind Bars. And this charity actually uh, trains inmates to train service dogs for uh, veterans who have had PTSD issues or other disabilities. We have students who are helping and faculty who are helping, um, but we also are inviting uh, professional support staff to help. But we're also going to invite uh, different groups in the community like Richland alumni and some other uh, neighborhoods that we've worked with to see if those people would like to come in. So it, you know, it's a neighborhood effort, not just a Richland effort. Jen had already this idea of how to create, I mean, they were handmade, but also you have to have a system. Uh, of production, if you will, and of mass production. And um, so she made these labs and we had a lot of help also from other students, um, ceramic students and, and people from the community. And basically we had these labs of clay and we had a couple of molds. And then we would break, we would cut, uh, make the molds of, because um, each poppy has two, um, two petals, if you will, of clay, and then they've been attached together. So, and then also, these have to be fired twice. So there's a first firing um, to sort of bisque them and to make the clay turn into hard, or to harden the clay. And then um, they have to be dipped into the glaze, which is what gives the color, and then fired again. So it's a very long process, um, but a beautiful one nonetheless. Something really interesting that I would like to, to share was how when we were in the process of making the poppies when it was just the clay and, and we had you know, this room filled with people, it was beautiful to see how I, you know, somebody or Jen would train a couple of people and would tell them, okay, this is how you make the poppies, right? But then, of course, you have a million things to do. We all did. And then new people would come and then they would have gotten, they gotten training from the people that we began with. So again, this sense of community by sharing this information and all working for this massive installation has been a very nice process to see. I really wanted to be a part of it because what better way to remember those who died in World War I for fighting for peace 
then to make these poppies. We had a professor, his name was Clive Siegel. Um, he taught us 1301 and he showed us a similar project that was done in England. He, he is really very passionate about history and that made me want to do something to help. Each one of these is a person. It's not just a project. And, and I, think that's, I think that's come across with the people who have volunteered their time, who have, you know, I think that's, that's part of that. Our message now is to get that out to the campus and the public in general. Uh, and, and I think we'll have no problem with that reception. But, uh, you know, that is the, that it, it, when it's all done, it's not about things floating in the pond and whether that's an engineering project or how that works, it's about them and how we, in effect, honor them. It's been a genuine pleasure working with everyone involved in this. Uh, it's a fabulous thing. It's one of the best things we've ever done as far as I'm concerned.